Sure, okay, sir. So, so right now we are standing here at the Permo Triassic boundary uh, in the Western Salt Range. So it's a normal gorge, and this this huge mountain range is the um, <coughs> southernmost range of the Himalayan Fold and Thrust Belt. Um, and and we are here to discuss the Permo Triassic boundary. We know that at the end of the Permian there was a mass extinction, and it is the largest biodiversity event in the Phanerozoic, um, whereby there's a huge uh, extinction of different marine and terrestrial uh, genera and species and new species appear. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the Paleozoic, uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, brachiopores and um, tabulate and rogos corals and we have uh, these trilobites. So trilobites live in this ocean for 250 million years but at this boundary, um, those trilobites um, <clears throat> has got extinct. And this brachiopod corals and trilobite you know, uh, they were replaced by ammonites and uh, bivalves and scleractinian corals. Uh, also, um, there were reefs in the Paleozoic, but after this uh, event for, for 16 to 20 million years, uh, the, the reef, uh, you know, <coughs> they got, uh, their growth got suspended. Um, <coughs> uh, you see, uh, here this boundary is, you have this uh, sandy kind of stuff at the base, so that's represent the the topmost part of the the permian and here you have these dolomite beds so these dolomite beds are actually representing the catway member of the miawali formation which is uh, representing the onset of the triassic era and these um, uh, uh, these these uh, dolomite beds are full of these ammonites and ceratites while the lower beds of the permian carbonates you see that there's a huge section of the permian which is full of the brachiopods uh, and then on top of that you have this white sandstone so that's representing uh, the topmost portion of the um, <coughs> Permian uh, which which extends over here so this this sandy stuff is a transitional environment between the lower uh, late Permian carbonates and between these um, limestone and dolomite of the uh, Triassic so there is a gradual shift in environment and and you have uh, you know uh, the, the 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 drowning of the uh, carbonate platform of the Permian and then you have this this white uh, sandstone which was deposited in a beach kind of setting which represents a drastic sea level fall along this uh, this boundary and then you have these <coughs> uh, dolomite beds uh, there are uh, the, the main cause of this extinction this mass extinction is uh, the hypercapnia a lot of carbon dioxide was uh, carbon dioxide was sent into the atmosphere um, and and uh, because of that you have global warming, ocean acidity, and because of that you also have ocean anoxia. Uh, so all these uh, parameters, the change in environment, uh, the, the the reduction of uh, you know uh, oxygen content, the the stratification of the ocean, the the ocean acidity. Um, so all these were, were were the causes of this 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 extinction, and and this change in environment, you know that is. Uh, assigned to the uh, massive volcanic eruption in along the Siberian trap. So that has sent a lot of carbon dioxide at the end of the Permian where, where there is a change in, 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 in the <coughs> paleoclimate and paleo environment on the terrestrial and on, on the continental settings. Um, uh, that trap was intruded into the uh, coli uh, sediment. So so when you are intruding the, the igneous rocks into the coal sediment, so there is uh, also a massive release of methane, and you know that methane is um, three to four times, uh, you know, severe greenhouse gas as compared to the carbon dioxide. So, so <clears throat> because of this hypercapnia and massive uh, methane outbursts into the atmosphere, and uh, it's it's mixing with the ocean uh, uh, system, has changed the, the paleo environment on the. On, on the continent and, and on the ocean and, and then you have this mass extinction. Some people say that there was a bolide impact um, <clears throat> on the earth crust and because of that you have the dusting of the atmosphere and uh, blocking of the sun rays and because of that uh, the, the primary productivity that got down because uh, you cannot have photosynthesis in a dark environment and <clears throat> uh, you know that has caused the, the, the extinction or it will be a combination of these two. <clears throat> so, so you see um, the, the, the biota of the Permian uh, is replaced by ammonite bivalves and uh, the uh, scleractinian coral. So you see um, these, these beds of the early Triassic age. So you have uh, these ammonites and, and, and you have these um, uh, ceratites. So 
that's that's the overall expression of this boundary in Pakistan. Unfortunately, um, uh, it's it's not a complete continental setting uh, when you going when you are going from late Permian to early Triassic. If that was a continuous continental setting, so that would uh, that would have given us an opportunity to look into the uh, continental environmental change in mass extinction uh, slowly and gradually. Um, uh, on the other hand, if it was a complete marine section in the late Permian and then in the early Triassic, so that would um, have uh, we have uh, we should have you know then uh, introspected into the marine realm that how the marine environment changed and how uh, that change has actually caused this this um, uh, extinction. Um, unfortunately, we have you know <coughs> late Permian uh, carbonates and early Triassic carbonates and dolomite, but in between we have the uh, clastic setting so that clastic setting you know that's a transitional zone so we don't have that a continuous record of continental setting or continuous record of the marine setting but anyhow overall um, <coughs> in the late permian and in the early triassic there is uh, you know uh, drastic visible change in biota which we can see and outcrop